Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today we're going to walk through the garden and we're going to do an assessment of all my tomato plants that are growing. And this is just really to show you how to look at the plants, decide what might be a concern, and I'll also show you what is not a concern. So you always want to start by just kind of looking at the overall appearance of your plant. These are almost five feet tall, nice and green. They're in there producing. We just had a rain. They look healthy. And I know that I've been sticking to my routine of water-soluble fertilizing in spring. I'll talk a little bit about that as we go along. As you come down the plants, you're going to notice leaf curling. The leaves are curling up. That's nothing to worry about, and you can't do much about it anyway, except stick with the routine of just even watering, even feeding, even feeding, even, <laughs> even feeding, and sometimes the plants just curl because of nature physiological reasons, nothing to really worry about. The plant will work it out. And it's only on the bottom leaf. So like if the whole plant was curling, maybe I would be concerned, but it's the same type of response that we just water them, keep the moisture consistent, and the plant will work it out. So there's not a whole lot you can do. Here's a leaf that looks pretty bad. And there's no pattern, pattern on there that I'm really concerned about for um, leaf spot or early blight. The pattern is different. This is just natural die off. Now you can see little specking in there, some specking up there. That could be a concern. Here's one that looks interesting to me and that's because it's a round circle, almost a round circle, and the brown has concentric circles in there. So it's just like circle within a circle, within a circle, within a circle. And it's hard to tell but that's what you're looking for. And then you're looking for the yellow halo around it. And that could be something of concern. So I would just remove that. I would actually remove the whole leaf. I'll remove this whole leaf. When you come over here, you see the specks on the underside, all dark, no yellow ring around the speck. That's the concern when you have a brown, almost circle with a yellow halo around it. Nothing coming through. Not sure what that is. Down further, some holes in there and maybe that's you know flea beetles or whatever but I'll come back I'll remove any of the leaves that have the spotting on there but most importantly the plants look generally healthy and the first of the month is when I spray my hydrogen peroxide spray so this plant is going to be washed in hydrogen peroxide so if any of these patterns that I see are a problem I'm going to treat the whole plant. The H2O2 literally cleans the leaves, kills off the fungus, and this plant should keep going for a while. If you're doing spray routines, you just want to be consistent. Every 10 days, every 7 days, every 14 days, whatever your plan is. Okay, let's go look at more tomato plants. Here's another tomato plant on the inside of the garden, right near the two we were just looking at. And it looks pretty healthy. It's not as big as the other ones, but that's the style of this plant, so that's perfectly normal. There's fruit, there's flowers, looks green. When I come to this leaf, there are holes in there. That looks like insect damage. Some curling, nothing to worry about. But there are a couple of tears. Those are just tears. That's probably from when we had the hail or from the wind. There's some more tearing right in there. That's nothing to worry about. There's more tearing right there. That's not a concern. What I did notice were a couple of holes down in the bottom, a little bit right on that small part of the leaf. And there may be some insects around here. I'll keep an eye on that. I mean, there's no need to break out the dusts or the neem oil right now, but you just wanna kinda look and see what's going on. All right, more tomato plants. So another tomato plant, this guy has to be staked up onto the post, it's falling over. And I didn't, you know, put new mulch down here. And you can see how the soil splashes up on there and on the undersides of the leaves. So mulching not only helps retain moisture, it keeps the dirt from splashing up. And that can help stop diseases from spreading if you have soil-borne diseases. But generally looking at this plant, I see some of the little holes again. So, although I just said 30 seconds ago, I'm not too worried about spraying, I'm a little bit 
worried now about maybe I'll do some neem oil spray on here or maybe some dust on the lower leaves. But I'm going to keep looking now as we progress down the garden for more of these type holes. Typically I don't get those in my tomato plants. So that's why there's a concern. But I don't know if you saw some of my earlier videos this year. There were a lot of the uh, damaged tomato plants after the frost came. Um, weakened the plants. Uh, they ended up getting lots of holes in them, which was new to the garden. And maybe some of those insects hung around. All right, let's check out some of these cherry tomatoes growing in here. These are all growing up the trellis. And I always start at the top. The leaves look great. And really don't see much except the small holes. And insects sometimes, like spider mites, start at the bottom and they work their way up the plant. So if you notice, all the holes have been down on the bottom. And the plant looks pretty good. No more repeating yellowing of leaves like we saw in the first plant. No brown circles with a yellow halo around it. So, so far so good. Three more indeterminate varieties. And they're getting to four feet tall. And they look pretty healthy overall. I'm just looking to see what we can find in here. Don't know what that is, but I'm not worried about it. Just remove it. Just because a leaf is starting to brown out doesn't mean you have to start worrying. If this was all over the place, then we start to get concerned and maybe it just, you know, maybe I sprayed it with something and it concentrated on the ends and, and just damaged the leaf. But you don't have to overthink it. Here's another one. That's just a leaf dying off, nothing to worry about. If that were some sort of fungus or some sort of problem that we really would have to worry about, we would see it popping up everywhere. This is normal die off in there. So what this is telling me is I need to come in and prune under here, take out some of the leaves, let the air flow through there, and I will do that when I'm done. You know, and that pattern's just a leaf dying off. And it's pretty dense. Now here's something that looks like a crazy problem. All these nodes on here, and this freaks people out all the time. This is just where roots would come out. Because tomato plants are a vine, if these actually fell over, this contacted the ground, new roots would come out. And it's a way that the plant really strengthens itself. And the more rain we have, like we've had uh, crazily here over the last week, and the more humidity, the more often you get these bumps. And the tomato plant basically feels the moisture around it, so it sets, starts sending out these root nodes. Like over on this plant, you don't have them, but different varieties respond differently. And three more indeterminate varieties in there. A couple of the same issues at the bottom. We're not gonna look at those anymore. And mostly, you know, Aside from doing my H2O2 spray today, I do need to get in here, thin out some of the bottoms, let the air flow. These are all my cherry tomatoes. So right in here, I always forget, there's either five on this side <clears throat> or five on this side, but there's nine plants growing up here. And this will really be a place where if I was getting early blight, some sort of leaf spot, it would start showing up. It usually just doesn't come to one plant. And just, you got to get down on the ground. Beautiful grape tomatoes coming in. I think those are yellow grapes. There's the holes. And... That is some black spotting. So it's on one, two leaves, a couple of holes, another tear. So we keep that in mind. Right in there, more holes. These are leaves that are just dying back. Above my thumb, that pattern is a little bit of a concern sometimes. But when you have it, like when you have a leaf spot or early blight, you just get dozens and you'll see hundreds of holes all over. I mean, it really stands out. This is just a leaf dying off. And I really do, 
just have to prune out these bottom leaves. And we'll end with this one, which is going to have hundreds of these beautiful tiny tomatoes on there. That's the Sweet 100, I think. And this plant, I just did a video on it, had those twisted leaves. And some people said it's a virus. Um, some people thought it was something else. And that's the thing, it's hard to always tell. But this plant had these small, tiny, distorted leaves. The plant worked itself out and the leaves up top are perfectly fine. If we come down here, again we have more normal die-off. So I'm going to get in, clean out the bottoms of the plants, try and get that 10 inch, 12 inch gap between the soil and the bottoms of the leaves, and my tomato plants would be fine. I just want to leave you with the idea of spraying, which I say over and over again. Well, number one, always test spray. If you're trying anything new, spray some plants, wait 48 hours. But just stick to a routine. Whatever sprays you pick, how often you decide to spray, doesn't matter so much as that you stay consistent and just keep the sprays coming regularly and that will manage a lot of diseases. Real quick, if you're following my video on planting 64 stalks of corn in a four foot space, this is what they look like. They are now hip high. They're doing really well and I'll be doing more on this. Thanks for watching my videos and being part of my garden world. I really appreciate it and please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. Thanks for watching.